The purpose of this video is to talk about tortuous veins and how to treat them with endovenous surgery. As we know recently, NICE, which is the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence, has approved endovenous surgery, or endothermal surgery as they call it, as the correct way to treat veins. And what this means is it means endovenous laser or endovenous radiofrequency. All of these techniques use a catheter that gets passed up inside one of the two major veins, which is the great saphenous vein, the one that goes from the ankle up the inside of the leg into the groin, or the small saphenous vein that goes up the back of the calf and in at the back of the leg. Of course, we can also use the lasers, particularly the EVLT, in small veins such as the anterior accessory saphenous vein on the thigh, and this is highly effective. And we've also been using it very effectively for many years using the trollop technique in the perforators in the lower leg and even in the thigh. But one of the questions that keeps coming up again and again is what do we do with the tortuous vein? And this video is going to go through that. So, what do we mean by a tortuous vein? After all, all varicose veins are actually quite wiggly and tortuous in any case. Well, of course, the endovenous surgery doesn't treat those ones we see on the surface. We are only talking about what's called the truncal veins, the great saphenous vein, the small saphenous vein, and occasionally the anterior accessory saphenous vein. And in the majority of patients, these are dead straight and very easy for a catheter to pass up. But if a patient has either had disease in it before, such as uh, clots in it, like a superficial thrombophlebitis, or if they've had them for a very long time and the wall has become very distorted, what can end up happening is that the vein itself can become tortuous. In other words, it becomes almost too long for the position it's in and it starts curving. This can be very difficult to pass up a catheter, particularly if the catheter is quite stiff. So what we have to think about is once we've seen this, what are we going to do about it? So what veins might this affect? Very, very rarely affects the anterior accessory saphenous vein, and it can affect the small saphenous vein, although it's quite uncommon for the small saphenous vein to become tortuous. If a small saphenous vein does have previous clot in it or has other scars, you might be able to use some of these techniques for that, but it's rare if due to just tortuosity. The great saphenous vein, however, particularly in the thigh, can often get tortuous, and this is the one that these techniques is most useful for. So how do we diagnose a tortuous vein? Well, obviously, the first thing we're likely to see with it is the ultrasound. We're not going to see it on the surface, because any tortuous vein we see on the surface is a varix, and unless the patient is emaciated, we're not going to see the great saphenous vein in the majority of them by our naked eyes. So when we do the scan, first of all the diagnostic scan, or when we scan the patient on the operating table, we're going to see that the great saphenous vein that deviates and has these tortuous curves in them. Now, no matter how bad it looks, it's always worth trying to pass the catheter up in the first place because sometimes the passage of the catheter itself causes the tortuosity to uh, disappear and the catheter will track around the bending of the veins. So what we do in our practice, we always start below the knee. I know some people go in around the ankle. That doesn't really matter as long as you're getting into the great saphenous vein. Under ultrasound control, you pass the catheter up and you get to the area of tortuosity. Of course, as we've always recommended, this should not be done in a patient who is lying flat on the table. The table should be 30 degrees head up at least, so the vein is as dilated as possible. If you haven't put the head up and the patient is flat and you're getting stuck, the first thing to do is to put the patient 30 degrees head up. This will fill the vein, dilate it, and quite often that's sufficient to pass the catheter through the area. If that hasn't worked and you're still getting stuck, the next thing to do is to see if you can put your hand on the skin above the vein and pull it gently. And sometimes this is enough to just pull that tortuous part straight. And if you pull hard enough, you can quite often pass the catheter around that tortuous place and up to where you want to get to. Other ways of getting around a tortuous section if pulling on the skin doesn't work is actually just manipulating the leg. It's quite common that if you bend the knee and lift the leg up at the hip and flex it and pass it out, sometimes those manipulations allow the catheter to pass through the tortuous segment. And it's always worth doing those before starting to manipulate the catheter itself. So just pull the catheter back slightly, bend the knee, pop the catheter back up and see if it tracks its own way. If that doesn't work, pull it back again, move the leg 
even further up, flexing it at the hip, and abduct it a bit away from the midline, try again, and just try some different positions, and quite often you'll find the catheter passes through the tortuous segment. If that hasn't worked, the next thing to do is to use the ultrasound and to see where it's catching. If you can see that you want the, air, the tip of the catheter to go downwards, just with your fingers, push on the tip of the catheter. Don't bother getting any special guide wires, you can just do it with your fingers and pushing on the skin you can push the tip of the catheter down. If you want to push it left, push it left. If you want to push it right, push it right. If you want, on the other hand, for it to come upwards, come back about 10 centimetres and push at that point. That usually flips the tip of the catheter up towards the probe and so you can then pass it upwards. And by doing that, you can often get round one or two simple bends. So, if you've got the tortuous segment and you just ha cannot get through it and you've tried all the techniques, you're 30 degrees head up, the vein is full, you've tried several times, you've moved the leg around, you've pushed on the vein in different areas and you've pulled the skin back to try and open it up and nothing's worked, there's no problem. All you do at that stage is you find the next bit of straight vein higher up and you put a second insertion in at that point and you just treat it as if it's a completely separate vein. And you end up doing endovenous laser up to the torturous segment, endovenous laser above the torturous segment, and then at that torturous segment, you either come back and do a phlebectomy under ultrasound control, or later on come back and treat it with foam sclerotherapy. The beauty with all these percutaneous techniques is you can never really be beaten. All you have to do is if you've got the skills to get into a vein under ultrasound, you can do this two, three, four times, even five times up the same vein, taking off little bits with endovenous laser or radio frequency, and the interim bits, just pulling them out with phlebectomy or injecting foam sclerotherapy. The one word of caution of this, of course, is if you want to do clever stuff like this, use very thin catheters and use catheters that you can treat very small segments. And some of the big radio frequency segmental catheters you can't use in this situation. And this is the advantage of either the radio frequency with very small ends or the endovenous laser, which is our preferred technique. The one thing you definitely must not do is force this. If you force the catheter through a torturous segment, you're going to perforate the vein. You either cause destruction on the inside of the vein, which causes a hematoma and nothing's going to pass through there easily, or you might even rupture the vein and have a hematoma on the outside, which will cause pain and bruising, the very thing we don't want. Worse still, if you really are pushing too hard, you can put the whole vein into spasm and then your get out clause, the fact you can go higher with a second uh, insertion to get the next bit up, suddenly disappears. You do not want this vein in spasm, you want it open and easy to treat.